It's no secret that Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't exactly a perfect card game. Here are some things that I think Yu-Gi-Oh! could take from other card games like Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, One Piece, and Lorcana, both for new players and for veterans of the game. Number one is supporting league play at local game stores. Since I pretty much just play Yu-Gi-Oh! exclusively, I actually was not aware of this until I saw it at my local game store. Games like Pokemon and Lorcana will have league systems where players are rewarded just for showing up and doing different activities within the game. This could be playing in tournaments, whether you win or lose, but also things like buying sealed product, bringing a friend to the card shop, teaching somebody how to play, conducting a trade. By doing these things, you get points and you can then later redeem those points for different rewards. This works wonders for games like Pokemon and Lorcana that really want to expand their reach to newer or younger players, but I think there's no reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! couldn't do the same thing. Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of has this in the Lost Art promotion card that you can get by spending $30 at your locals, prize support like OTS packs, and that's how they get sneak peeks and that sort of thing. But this would be a whole nother level to that. And it's something that people can enjoy whether they're new or a veteran because it's not about winning or losing, it's about group camaraderie, helping people, participating. Idea number two is printing cards in multiple rarities. So this is something that Pokemon pretty much prides itself on. The way that it works is you can get any card in multiple rarities, or at least some more strong or iconic ones. This is something that I've seen a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players want for a while. Basically the ability to get a card like Pot of Prosperity or Triple Tactics Thrust as, you know, maybe a common or even just like a super rare or a rare, and that way it's accessible for a lot of people. But if you're the hyper flexi money bags type, you can spring for the secret rare or ultimate rare versions of them. I can get my regular plain playable Charizard or I can get an exclusive special shiny alternate art one, but they both function the same way. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where you need those powerful staple cards in order to stand a chance in competitive play. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I do think that those cards should be accessible for all players. Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of already has this because they will print tournament influential cards in OTS packs as ultimate rares, and that can be a really nice flex to have. But I think that actually printing them in low rarities would be a really good starting point. It looks like Konami is going to be experimenting with this in the rarity collection later this year where there's a lot of different reprints that can come in a lot of different rarities. All right, before the next idea, we gotta pay some bills real quick with a word from the video sponsor. Code Geass Nelusha Rebellion Lost Stories is a free strategy game based on the popular anime of the same name. In an alternate reality where the, the Holy Britannian Empire has almost conquered the entire planet, each of the countries subjugated under the Britannian rule have their freedom, rights, and even their names taken away. In Area 11, a young man named Nelouch will start his rebellion on the day he meets the mysterious C2, who grants him a mysterious power, the Gias. The story is told from the point of view of Nelouch's friend and offers a fresh take on the anime's narrative. I'm a huge fan of Code Gias. I watched it a lot during high school. My favorite characters were Suzaku, Colin, and of course Nelouch himself. Speaking of characters, the cast for this game is a full lineup of original Japanese voice actors. Lelouch is played by Jun Fukuyama, C2 by Yukana, and Suzaku by Takahiro Sakurai. The main story cutscenes are created in live 2D, giving a beautiful art style that mirrors the original anime. And to top it off, the game features epic gameplay in which you can take command of fast-paced battles where proper placements of your squad's nightmare frames are the difference between victory and defeat. High quality 3D battles add even more excitement to each skirmish. Create your own unique battle squad. All the characters and nightmare frames that appear in the anime can be used to create your squad. So download Code and Lucid Rebellion Lost Stories now by clicking the first link in the description box below or scanning the QR code on the screen. And don't forget to redeem our gift code TEAMAPS1 for some epic in-game rewards. Instructions for that are in the description. So the third idea is event-specific prizing. Now, this one gets a little tricky. Yu-Gi-Oh! prize support has always been a bit of a contentious topic. It seems like we're never gonna be able to get cash prizes at tournaments. And while that's kind of unfortunate, one really cool idea I had was taking a page out of the book of games like Digimon and One Piece by making event-specific prize cards. Basically, instead of just making prize cards like another verse dragon that Yu-Gi-Oh! has that are kind of vanillas and maybe not the most exciting thing, you could instead actually just reprint popular tournament cards, but give them exclusive printings, 
rarities, artworks, or even just a stamp of the specific event that they're from, and that way it becomes a flex. Because yeah, sure, you can play your Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and it works, but a top-level Yu-Gi-Oh player who does really, really well in events could play their YCS 250th Ash Blossom. It's ultimate rare, it has an alternate art, it's got a stamp on it, there's maybe only 32 or 16 of them available for the people who made top cut at those events. Nobody would feel like they're at a disadvantage because they just could not make it out to those events or could not top those events. But for those who could, it feels really special and makes a great collection. It would definitely be something that people could sell. If there's one thing I've noticed about Yu-Gi-Oh players over the years, it's that flexing is kind of everything. Having the high rarity versions of cards, having exclusive play mats, deck boxes, world championship sleeves. So this would just kind of tie into that. One other interesting Yu-Gi-Oh! prize support idea that I had, although this one's a little bit more ambiguous, is actually giving away gaming PCs. I say this because I saw that at the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championships this year, Konami actually was sponsored by Asus. And so if Asus is an official brand, partner, whatever, with Konami, maybe that means that winning a YCS could get you a super specced out high-end gaming PC as a prize. So number four is supporting alternate formats at the high level. So this has obviously been a pretty big community discussion in the Yu-Gi-Oh! space for a while now. Yu-Gi-Oh! definitely needs alternative formats. The thing is, it actually already has several different ones that are technically officially supported. We've got Edison format, we've got GOAT format, and we have Speed Duel format. And while they could certainly experiment with more, I know that there's more niche things like Rivalry with Warlords or Heart of the Underdog, the big problem I see in all of them is that it doesn't often feel like Konami themselves officially, officially support them like on the big stage, right? Pokemon and especially Magic the Gathering are great examples here because they do have large scale events that will run multiple formats under the same roof. So it can be done. So one idea that I had is at YCS events, Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments could run a standard advanced sort of format thing and then they could also run a speed duel alt format or a time wizard alt format. The thing is though, they could rotate these second ones between events, right? So at one YCS, you'll have advanced format and speed duel. At the next YCS, you'll have advanced format and Edison format. Now, logistically, I see how this could definitely be a little difficult. That's more staffing, more judges, perhaps more tables and time and different set of prizes. But I really do think that this would be really helpful for legitimizing those alternative formats and show players that Konami recognizes you whether you play advanced or one of the many others. For my last idea, I've got two honorable mentions. I say that because I'm not 100% sure how these would work within the space of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I figured I would put them out there and you guys can give your thoughts. So the first one is Mulligans, which is basically if you don't like your hand or your hand doesn't have a playable card, you can shuffle your deck and redraw. Different card games handle this a little bit differently. Sometimes you'll be able to selectively pick which cards that you put back in your deck and redraw. Sometimes they get shuffled in or other times they go directly to the bottom to ensure you don't redraw the same things. But a lot of card games do it and I think Yu-Gi-Oh could stand to at least experiment with it. So Yu-Gi-Oh is a game where a lot comes down to the first turn. Both the dice roll and also whether the person who does end up going second draws the outs. The cards that they need to break the opponent's board or just the hand traps they need to interact with the opponent and make sure that they don't get completely blown out. A mulligan would mean that players would get at least a second chance at drawing the crucial cards they need in order to play the game because we all know that Yu-Gi-Oh is really, really frustrating when you break and just don't get playable cards. The possible downside that I see here though is because top tier Yu-Gi-Oh decks are already really consistent and a lot of decks only need one specific card to start an entire combo, Mulligan would actually maybe mean that top tier decks benefit proportionately more than low tier decks do. So I'm not 100% sure on this one. And the other honorable mention is full art cards. I know this is something that I see a lot of people talk about. Other card games do full arts and they always manage to look incredible. They look really great, especially with like dragon monsters, which Yu-Gi-Oh actually has plenty of and does really well with designing. So I would like to see it, but I think that with full art cards, you gotta be a little careful because of a few reasons. First of all, Yu-Gi-Oh cards are Japanese size, so the card itself is smaller, which means that it would just be really hard to maybe extend the art and like make it still look good. But maybe more importantly, Yu-Gi-Oh cards have a lot of text. So how they choose to do the full arts might be hard because the text is already really small and you would still maybe want to retain the text box while having the rest of the card's image like wings and capes and stuff 
kind of fly past those borders. I'm not sure what the printing process would be like for this, so that's why I say it's a bit of a question mark, but it could look really good. And I definitely don't think that it needs to be something that's super duper accessible. These could be prize cards, which would really set them apart, or they could be special promotional cards for specific events, or maybe even that league play idea I was mentioning earlier. There don't have to be a lot, but that would be what makes them special. And the final thing I think Yu-Gi-Oh! could take from other card games is a product labeling system. So this is actually something that I saw on Pokemon products a while back, and it's that different products will actually show the level of play that they're intended for. So like level one would be for beginner players, level two for intermediate players, and level three for advanced players. And I think that this would help a lot with new players getting into the game, because I often get asked, what product should I buy if I'm a new player? And if you're younger, or if you're like a parent who's buying for someone who's younger, it would really be helpful to see, okay, this is a good product for a newcomer versus this is something that's maybe for someone who's already a little bit more familiar with the game. For example, Speed Duel products would definitely be considered a level one or beginner level product. Structure decks could also be considered beginner products, but I actually think that some of them would be closer to intermediate because they do have more combos involved. Which begs the question, what exactly would be considered a level three product? Would it be a reprint set? Would it be a hyper advanced tournament ready pack? I'm not sure, but I think the idea is really cool. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, and one more quick thing that I saw at my local card shop. Why does Yu-Gi-Oh not have these trainer tool kits? You literally get like decks, packs, sleeves, rule books, dice, everything, like all in one package. This is perfect, come on Konami.